Citroen's classy, glassy Grand C4 Space Tourer aims to offer the most practical, the most versatile and the most elegant solution to families shopping in the seven-seat mid-sized MPV segment. It's a sector aimed at those who need either a big boot or the option to take more than five folk, but don't want the sheer size and expense of a large segment people carry out. If that's you, then you'll find that this now more efficient and sophisticated French contender takes care of the basics of space, safety and cost effectiveness with ease. But where this model really excels is in the other things. Style, technology and a very emotive feel. By people carrying standards, it's a bit special. Buying a seven-seat MPV is usually an exercise in sacrifice. You accept the fact that in return for three seating rows, you'll get something boxy, boring and bland. Or will you? With this Grand C4 Space Tourer model, Citroen begged to differ on that score. You might well know this car better by its previous name, the Grand C4 Picasso. After years of wrangling with the great Spanish artist's family, Citroen finally abandoned using Senor Pablo's famous moniker in the spring of 2018, adopting instead the Space Tourer badge that the brand now wants to use across its MPV range. The Picasso name had been synonymous with Citroen people carriers since the turn of the century, and with seven-seat MPVs since the first-generation Grand C4 Picasso model was launched in 2006. Now that car tapped into the major growth area in this segment amongst buyers who really only needed five seats but wanted the occasional versatility of a couple of extra fold-out chairs in the boot. Now this replacement design, originally launched in early 2014, made that arrangement more usable. That was thanks to extra interior room provided without the kind of excessive extra vehicle length that buyers in this sector tend not to want. Now here, that additional space comes courtesy of the class leadingly long wheelbase conferred upon this car by a clever multi-patented EMP2 platform. It all sounds quite promising, particularly as these practical and dynamic virtues are clothed in what is arguably the most stylish shape ever to clothe a family-minded MPV. Less futuristic at the original launch of this model back in early 2014 was the relatively old tech engine range and the media connectivity on offer. Both these things, though, have been brought up to date since, first with a model update in 2016, and then with a further package of improvements introduced along with the change to Space Tourer badging in spring 2018. These have seen the range benefit from the PSO Group's latest 1.5 litre Blue HDI 130 diesel engine, which can on request now be mated to a more sophisticated auto gearbox than was offered before, the replacement EAT8 transmission that we're going to try here, featuring much smoother shifting and eight speeds. At the summit of the range, there's a new range topping 2 litre Blue HDI 160 diesel power plant, and we're going to test that too. And with the plushest variants, you can now specify a raft of of extra camera-driven safety kit too. In prospect then, what we have here is a very clever people carrier indeed, with a glassy, futuristic combination of high-tech style and efficient practicality that ought to set strong standards in the segment. Does it? Let's find out. I should start by telling you about the engineering improvements that have come packaged up with this model's change in name from Picasso to Space Tourer. Uh, the volume Blue HDI diesel engine is now 1.5 rather than 1.6 litres in size, but it's 130 horsepower output is slightly higher than before. Uh, the 2 litre Blue HDI diesel option gets a slight power hike too, to 160 HP. Elsewhere in the range, uh, the efficient 1.2 litre three cylinder Pure Tech petrol engine continues, but only in 130 HP form. There's a fresh auto transmission option too, the jerky old six-speed EAT6 self-shifter ditched finally in favour of a much smoother eight-speed EAT8 unit, which is optional on the two 130 HP power plants, but which is standard on the top Blue HDI 160 diesel variant that we're trying here. 
Don't dismiss petrol power out of hand if you're a lower mileage MPV by looking at this car. We actually think that the PureTech 130 unit makes a good partner for it. Now you obviously don't get as much pulling power through the gears as you would in a diesel variant, but 230 newton meters of torque is nothing to be sniffed at, and the 62 miles an hour sprint is purposefully dispatched in 9.8 seconds on the way to 124 miles an hour. Uh, the figures for the alternative Blue HDI 130 diesel model are pretty much the same, 10.9 seconds and 123, but with 300 newton meters of torque on tap, uh, overtaking is a mite easier in the mid-range. If you want more pulling power than that, there is, as previously mentioned, this top 2-litre Blue HDI 160 diesel variant to consider, uh, which is worth looking at if you're regularly going to be towing, uh, using the car fully loaded, or travelling longer distances. This flagship version improves the performance figures to 9.2 seconds and 130 miles an hour. Whichever engine you choose though, one thing remains constant, the silky smooth ride. It's the thing that we like most about this car. It may come as uh, news to some motoring journalists, but the majority of MPV buyers don't routinely want to throw their cars around as if they were on a stage from the RAC rally. What most of them would prefer instead is a model that rolls the red carpet over the average appallingly surfaced British road, uh, as this one does. I mean, nothing in this part of the market Market can better the pillowy ride quality on offer here. But the trick, which Citroen hasn't always mastered, is to offer that without inducing the kind of body roll and handling wooliness that removes any element of enjoyment from the driving. In this respect, it's certainly true that this impressively refined design has proved to be a useful step forward from earlier Citroen MPVs. A light stiff EMP2 or efficient modular platform leaves this model well over 100 kilos lighter than most of its direct rivals, and it certainly helps in uh, making this car feel slightly more agile. But it's still some way off the sprightly standards of a rival Ford Grand C-Max or even a Renault Grand Scenic in terms of steering feel and body roll. And in true Citroen style, the brakes are quite heavily servo-assisted, reacting to the merest brush on the pedal. If you can ignore all that uh, and get familiar with the car and even start to push on a little through the corners, you'll find that the anchors are reassuringly effective, the steering is actually quite accurate, and grip is relatively plentiful. It's just getting to that point, something that you probably won't manage on a brief test drive. Still, don't be put off by initial unfamiliarities of design and drive. After all, you probably wouldn't be looking at this Citroen in the first place if you didn't want something just that little bit different from the usual character-free, compact, people-carrying experience. Just enjoy this car for what it is as you float over road imperfections, marvel at the unusually hushed levels of refinement, and enjoy the benefits of a commanding driving position, which is a huge help at roundabouts or when parking, and with this panoramic screen makes it seem like you're suddenly viewing the world in high definition. It's all very Citroen. Citroen is a brand with a heritage in design flair. You don't always find it though in the segments that you'd expect. Over the last few years, some of this maker's conventional volume models have been, well, pretty conventional. So you might assume that the company's mainstream seven seat people carrier would be much the same. As you can see though, it isn't. Uh, a huge proportion of this vehicle's budget was lavished on aesthetics inside and out, with the result being a futuristic take on family transport that instantly makes almost everything else in the sector look dull and derivative. We liked it back at this model's original launch in 2014, and with its current Grand C4 Space Tourer badging, this Gallic MPV remains an eye-catching thing. That certainly seems to be Citroen's perspective, uh, because the French maker hasn't really made any significant styling changes in all the time this particular design's been on sale. The aesthetics still get your attention, with a distinctive three-tiered light signature and a windscreen that flows right up into the roofline. 
This seven-seater Grand C4 Space Tourer model does, of course, share plenty with its more compact five-seat C4 Space Tourer stablemate, although not quite as much as you might expect. Citroen claims, in fact, that only four main body parts are carried over between the two cars. Uh, as you'd expect, most of the design differences that set this lengthened Grand version apart are to be found at the back, uh, where the wheels have been moved rearwards by 55 millimeters and a lengthened roof, uh, taller profile far windows and longer rear doors make it easier to use the extra two boot mounted fold out seats. And we also really like the signature profile flourish, which is found in the way that this contrasting roof rail flows from front to back before curling artfully around the rear window to highlight the spacious glassy look. Uh, the wheels are between 16 and 18 inches in size. We've got the 17 inch Mamba style rims here. Moving around to the back, the Grand C4 Space Tourer body shape gets unique rear tail lights that can be ordered with a distinctive 3D illumination and a neat roof spoiler tops things off. Okay, let's take a seat up front, at which point the first thing your Citroen salesperson will show you is this panoramic windscreen. Push up this sun visor and your normal upward 28 degree angle of vision is increased to a massive 108 degrees. It's a better view out, in fact, than you get roofed down in a convertible where the windscreen rail is usually directly above your head. Uh, so practically, it means that you don't have to crane your neck up when, uh, for example, you're first in the queue at the traffic lights. Uh, Subjectively, it does wonders in increasing the light, airy feeling of the cabin. And that's something that's further aided by these front quarter lights here. The overhead extended glass section is progressively tinted, so the top of your head won't be. But if you really don't like it, you can pull the sun visor back down again to the point where the top of the roof would normally be. And that is just the start of the contemporary cleverness. Designer Frederick Subiru describes the interior as being inspired by contemporary loft style living. It is uncompromisingly modern and airy, and there are a few touches that are quite extravagantly designed, like the optional relaxed front passenger seat. That lets the occupant raise, stretch, and rest their legs. The days of Citroen's fitting built down to a price with all the design flair of a buffet car cheese sandwich which are thankfully consigned to the past. Compare this cabin to that of, well, say an old Zara Picasso, and you never believe that they came from the same company. The dashboard is dominated by these twin screens. Virtually all new cars have some sort of central infotainment screen these days, like this Citroen's tablet-style seven-inch touch drive interface lower display. But more unusual is this snazzly futuristic 12-inch panoramic HD panel up top, which replaces the normal set of conventional dialed instrument gauges. Now, unfortunately, this feature isn't standard on the entry-level spec variants, but if you're buying this car, do try to stretch up to a trim level that has it because this is one of the defining parts of this high-tech design. Uh, this top screen is primarily there to show a virtual speedometer, but it can also be configured to display all sorts of information um, like cruise control and speed limiter settings. Uh, plus there are various split screen options. If for example, uh, you want to view a navigation map uh, at the same time as trip computer and speedo readouts. Now you can also change the display of the dials from round to square, although actually come to think of it, not quite sure why you'd want to do that. More useful is the option of changing the screen's overall theme and uploading a personal photograph from a USB stick to use as a backdrop. We're not quite so sure about some aspects of the lower infotainment screen, although at least it is standard across the range, uh, as well as managing sat-nav, stereo sounds, and Bluetooth compatibility. It also aims to reduce dashboard button clutter by replacing a conventional set of ventilation and air conditioning controls. Now, while this seems like a great idea in principle, it can be a bit annoying when, say, you're driving along with the sat nav showing, and then you've got to take your eyes off the road and shuttle through the menus just to change the temperature and then stab away at the touchscreen to try to get a response. 
We've no complaints about the rest of this screen's functionality though. Uh, this lower monitor includes the mirror screen feature, so you can duplicate your smartphone's display onto the monitor via either the Apple CarPlay or the MirrorLink Android systems. Plus, you can activate compatible apps too, like uh, Parkopedia, Fuel, Weathercrave and Rock Scout. Um, most models also get an upgraded navigation system as well. Uh, that's the 3D Citroen Connect Nav setup, and it's cleverer in the way that the screen recognises a wider variety of contact points. So you can pinch and swipe as you would on a smartphone, or you can use voice recognition if that's easier. Uh, the Connect Nav system can read your emails and your text messages audibly to you. And there's also TomTom -tom mapping data with real-time traffic information, uh, local weather forecasts, and information on car parks and petrol stations. Plus, you can also do local point of interest searches via the internet. It's all pleasingly 21st century. There's more to the cabin than just those screens though. You'll need a bit of time to get used to the steering wheel, which rather ironically, given the clean, open feeling of the dash, is festooned with buttons. Still, it is nicely made and it's surrounded by an interior that's fashioned from some really high quality materials. As for cabin storage, well, uh, to be frank, that could be a bit better. Uh, the glove box is mostly taken up by the fuse box. There's nowhere to store your sunnies. Uh, the twin cup holders down here at the bottom of the center stack are very small. And the lidded box nearby that houses the various connectivity points isn't as big as it first looks. On the plus side though, you get a deep lidded box between the seats that can be um, removed completely on an automatic model like this one. And providing you avoid Entry level trim, you'll get useful under seat drawers, and you'll also get these front seat armrests that give a captain's chair type feel. We also really like the optional rear facing conversation mirror, which is there to give an unimpeded view of exactly which child has just stuffed its sticky sweet into your 12 volt socket. So, how will those children fare once they're installed rearwards and ready to plug their gaming equipment into one of the three 12 volt sockets scattered around the car? Well, pull open the rear doors that open wide to a 65 degree angle for excellent access and it certainly looks pretty spacious. with comfort that you can properly appreciate thanks to a proper seating arrangement. Now, unlike many people carriers, this one doesn't position the unfortunate middle rear passenger with legs astride a central transmission tunnel and perched on some hard and narrow piece of bulging foam. Instead, there's a completely flat floor here and a rear cabin seating area, which is made up of three separate, identically sized chairs, uh, all with Isofix child seat mountings, and they can all be reclined and folded flat independently of one another. Uh, avoid entry level trim and you'll find that they can be uh, slid backwards and forwards too. That last feature is really useful. Let's say you've got a small child on a booster seat in the back. You can push them forward so that their needs are more accessible. Uh, the various seat folding permutations are helpful too. Uh, so for example, if the middle seat's not in use, it can serve as a table to uh, serve the outer two passengers. Or alternatively, if you're only using the middle seat, then you might want to use the uh, cinema style feature on the outer two, which enables the seat bases to be flipped up for extra floor storage. Key practicality features that are either optional or limited to the top spec variant include uh, aircraft style fold out tables built into the front seat backs, uh, fan speed adjustment for these neatly integrated B pillar vents, uh, integrated retractable rear side window sun blinds, and a huge panoramic glass roof which ups the combined glazed area to a greenhouse like 5.3 square meters. Uh, providing you avoid entry level trim, you'll get rear privacy glass and these two neat underfloor compartments which allow things like kids toys or stuff that you want to store away from prying eyes to be concealed. Uh, a 12 volt socket that's uh, provided centrally next to this uh, small storage area and there are bright LED reading lights provided for both outer rear passengers. Um, the rear door pockets though are small and narrow. <laughs> 
So, time to look at the area of this car that sets it apart from its five-seater C4 Space Tourist Showroom Stablemate. That's the third seating row. This is certainly easier to get into than it was on the pre-2014 first-generation model, thanks to a neat one-handed easy entry system. You simply uh, pull forward this catch on the seat shoulder. Get yourself seated and there are pluses and minuses. Uh, there is a cup holder here and there are a couple of storage compartments on either side. Uh, Citroen reckons that it's class leadingly spacious back here, but that still doesn't mean that it'll be especially comfortable for two tall adults on a long trip. Having said that though, uh, we really do need to be fair about this. No mid-sized MPV of just 4.6 meters in length is gonna be able to offer that. On the plus side, the fact that the second seating row has the widest sliding range in the segment means that if you are traveling seven up, it'll be easier to tailor the cabin to the needs and heights of your various occupants. So finally, let's check out boot space. Now, unfortunately, as with the ordinary C4 Space Tourer, the tail lamps are uh, mounted actually on the clamshell style tailgate. That makes it rather heavy to lift. That makes the powered tailgate option, that's a feature that we normally think is fairly unnecessary to be quite desirable in this particular case. Uh, with the hatch raised, you'll be able to access a cargo area that can be one of the very largest in the class, although not, it must be said, with all seven seats in use. Uh, that's a seating lamp out that'll leave you a relatively compact amount of storage space to play with, just 165 litres, which is 68 litres short of what you'll get in a similarly configured Renault Grand Scenic. Still, that is more than uh, competitors like Vauxhall's Zafira Tura and uh, Volkswagen's Turan and also Ford's Grand C-Max can offer with all the seats in this configuration. The relatively restricted luggage space with all the seats in use won't regularly be an issue for most likely buyers, given that much of the time they'll be using this car with the third row chairs folded into the floor. Uh, if you do that, you'll find that no other mid-sized MPV can match what is the uh, widest cargo area in the segment, stretching 1.17 meters between the wheel arches. As a result, with all three sliding middle row chairs pushed right back, there's 632 liters on offer, push them all forward, and that figure rises to 793 litres. To give you a bit of perspective there, that's 163 litres more than you'll get in a similarly configured Renault Grand Scenic, and nearly double the amount of space that you get in, say, a Kia Carenz with five seats in use. So no, not all mid-sized seven-seat MPVs are the same. It'll really pay you to do your homework when it comes to practicality. Where this Citroen spaciousness really is impressive though is uh, when you're able to fold both second and third row seating to use all the luggage space it can offer. That's a full 2,181 litres. Now that's a figure that you won't be able to better in a seven seat MPV unless you get something based on a van or you pay significantly more for a slightly bigger Ford Galaxy or Volkswagen Charan class of people carrier. Again, we need to put this showing into perspective. I mean, in total capacity terms, we're talking a massive 444 litres more space than you'll get an arrival Renault Grand and scenic with the seats in the same configuration. If you avoid entry level trim, uh, then your Grand C4 Space Tourer will also feature a fold flat front passenger seat for longer items, and that allows a load length of up to 2.5 meters, and that's enough for something like a kayak. Citroen expects the majority of its uh, C4 Space Tourer sales to be of this seven-seater grand model rather than the standard five-seat version, and you can see why. Uh, the premium to graduate up from the shorter wheelbase C4 Space Tourer and gain this longer design's extra third seating row is only 1,700 pounds, and that's an outlay that gets you a considerable amount of extra family flexibility. Now at the time of this test, uh, autumn 2018, that left Grand C4 Space Tourer pricing pitched from around £24,000 to around £32,500, depending on the engine that you want and the trim variant you're looking at. And there are three of those, Touch Edition, uh, this volume mid-range feel spec model, or the top spec flare versions. Now most sales are likely to be in the £25,000 to £28,000 segment, and that's uh, the kind of money that most buyers of mid-sized seven-seat MPVs shell out in this country. 
The brand's EAT8 8-speed automatic gearbox is a £1,570 option, and we found that it really suits the laid-back demeanour of this Citroen. Go for the top Blue HDI 160 diesel, and you have to have that auto gearbox. Now time to talk in a little more detail about those engines. Now previously almost all buyers of this Citroen MPV chose a diesel, but you don't need us to tell you that things have been changing in that regard over the last few years. So with that in mind, don't automatically dismiss the single petrol option that Citroen offers here. And it's a 1.2 litre, three cylinder PureTech 130 horsepower unit. Even if you're not particularly interested in the planet saving arguments against diesel, if you're a low mileage family buyer, you could well find that the PureTech option makes more sense. A considerable number of customers for this car, though, will continue to want to find the premium of just over £1,500 that Citroen charges to switch from the PureTech petrol unit to the Blue HDI 130 base diesel engine, and that's priced from just under £26,000. Uh, there is a big price jump to make if you want to move up to the 2-litre Blue HDI 160 diesel that's on test here, and that's priced from around £30,000. So, having talked you through the range, let's now talk you through the value proposition that this car offers uh, against rival models in its segment, which is where it's important to know exactly what you want and to compare like with like. So first, a few simple observations. If you're going to be carrying seven adults on a regular basis, then this category of mid-sized seven-seat MPV won't suit you. You'll need a full-sized large sector MPV from the next class up, something from the Ford Galaxy, Volvo, Volkswagen Chiran segment, where new model prices sit mainly in the £28,000 to £35,000 bracket. Or maybe something even bigger, like Citroën's own Space Tourer, and that's a van-based MPV that's priced between £30,000 and £44,000 and is able to seat up to nine people. That is also the kind of money that you'll need generally for the smallest breed of seven-seat SUV, a vehicle like Skoda's Kodiak or Hyundai Santa Fe or Kia Sorento, although the third row in those cases will be much more cramped. Now, with that established, we now also need to point out that some seven-seat mid-sized MPVs are bigger than others. The ones that, unlike this Citroen, don't also come in a shorter five-seat size tend to be slightly smaller and more restricted inside because, well, they're trying to be all things to all people. So, not too long for the five-seater crowd, but just spacious enough to suit the seven-seat set. Uh, we'll use theoretically comparable seven-seat mid-sized MPVs like Kia is Karenz and Volkswagen's Turan as an example of what we mean here. So both the Kia and the Volkswagen measure in at around 70 millimeters shorter than this Citroen. Now that's a difference that uh, might not sound too great, but it's one that actually makes a significant impact on the amount of space that those third row occupants get. Take your family with you on the test drive, fold out all the seats and try it before you buy is our advice. So price-wise, uh, the Kia Karenz could save you around four to five thousand pounds over this C4, but you'd lose a lot of that saving during your time of ownership because uh, that slower, budget-orientated Korean MPV would cost more to run and it would depreciate faster too. The Turan is better in all those respects and it costs about the same to buy as this Citroen, but it also offers significantly less power and yet costs around 10% more to run. Two better matches for this car, we think, lie in Renault's Grand Scenic and Vauxhall's Safira Tura. Both models have been significantly improved in recent years. Uh, the Vauxhall will cost you around £2,500 less than the Citroën to buy, but it costs quite a lot more to run. Uh, the Renault gets closer to this C4's exemplary running cost. In fact, it can slightly improve on them in diesel form, and it costs £500 to £1,000 less to buy, uh, although Citroën dealers will point out that the Grand Scenic engines give you less power. It is perhaps more significant though that both those two rivals have less uh, seats of folded space inside than this Grand C4 Space Tourer does. And that is surprising in the case of the Vauxhall because uh, that car is 54 millimeters longer. 
What else is there in terms of alternatives in this segment? Uh, a van-based MPV like Ford's Tonea Connect, Fiat's Doblo, uh, Peugeot's Rifter or Citroen's own Berlingo. Well, that is certainly be spacious and cheap, but if you're attracted by the avant-garde looks of this Grand C4 Space Tourer, you probably won't want anything as clunky and utilitarian as that. In terms of more realistic MPV rivals, well, in previous years, we would have cited Ford's S-Max as a possible competitor for this car, but in second generation form, the S-Max's pricing has been raised substantially to the point where you're having to pay around three and a half thousand pounds more than Citroen's asking here. And in return from your Ford dealership, you'll be getting yourself an MPV that really doesn't offer that much more space. Now, Ford now promotes its Grand C-Max model as a closer match to this Citroen, um, and indeed, that people carrier is priced comparably against this C4. It undercuts it by around £500. Unfortunately for Ford, though, it offers significantly less luggage space than you'll get from a Grand C4 Space Tourer. To give you just uh, one pertinent stat, a Grand C Max has 100 litres less space than the Citroën when all three rows of seats are in use. And that is quite a difference. You can see then, however you cut it, this Citroen looks a strong prospect for the right kind of buyer. So if you are that person, what can you expect to find included within the standard equipment tally? Well, quite a lot actually. All models get distinctively practical Grand C4 Space Tourer touches like the clever panoramic windscreen and three separate full-size second row seats with reclining backrests. Other equipment features uh, that are fitted right across the range include smart alloy wheels with at least 16 inches in size, LED daytime running lights, auto headlamps and wipers, front fog lights, uh, rear parking sensors, power folding mirrors, a parametric and volumetric alarm, and a space saver spare wheel. Inside, there's dual zone air conditioning with a pollen filter. There's a stitched leather multifunction steering wheel, aux in, USB and 12 volt sockets. Plus there's cruise control with a speed limiter. Um, and below the unusual central LCD instrument display, you also get a seven inch touch drive center dash infotainment touchscreen. And that's your access point for Bluetooth phone compatibility, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring and the six speaker DAB stereo system. System. Unfortunately, you have to stretch beyond base touch edition spec and find around £1,400 more to trade up to this mid-range field trim if you're going to get a range of practical and comfort oriented features that we think really set this C4 Space Tour apart in its market segment. Plus, you'll also need to stretch beyond entry-level spec to get the option of the camera-driven safety tech that we're going to brief you on in a moment. So what do you get with the mid-range field spec models? Well, the exterior styling is lifted quite a bit by larger 17-inch Mamba alloy wheels, by the rear privacy glass, and by the silver side signature strip that curves around the rear C-pillar. Plus you get puddle lights in the doors and front parking sensors at this level too. Inside, field spec Grand C4 Space Tourer models get a smarter interior that's trimmed with what Citroen calls its wild blue ambiance. Uh, perhaps more significantly though, occupants will enjoy niceties like Citroen's Connect navigation system, a massaging function for the front seats and aluminium front sill scuff protectors. Plus you get the 12 inch panoramic HD color central instrument display that for us is really a key part of this interior's future Futuristic appeal. In addition, there are useful features too, like underfloor storage compartments at the rear and back seat paces that slide. Uh, the front seats incorporate lower drawers and they're also embellished with armrests. Plus there's height adjustment and there's also a fold flat function for the front passenger seat too. At the priciest end of the range, a flagship flare variant is identifiable by its larger 18-inch Python alloy wheels and by the brighter LED illumination used for both the tail lamps and for the front indicators that are built into power folding dormers. Inside, there's a classier cabin that features the brand's hype grey ambiance theme, and that gives you part leather seat trimming and the gloss-finished grey dashboard. 
Probably the key flare spec feature though is the huge panoramic glass roof and that ups the combined glazed area to a greenhouse like 5.3 square meters. Uh, desirable extra interior touches include dimmable interior mood lighting, an auto dimming electrochrome rear view mirror, uh, a child observation mirror and for the second row passengers dedicated fan speed adjustment, fold down tables and integrated rear side window sun blinds. Uh, there's a bit of extra extra tech too, courtesy of extra items like a reversing camera and a park assist self-parking system that automatically identifies spaces and then steers you into them. Let's now move on to take a look at the safety provision offered by the model. As you'd expect, there are twin front side and curtain airbags, plus ice fixed child seat mountings on all three rear seats. To try to keep these things from ever being necessary, there are the usual electronic assistance features, including traction and stability control, plus ABS brakes with brake assist for emergency stops. All models also get uh, Citroen's neat coffee break alert feature, which lets you know if you've been driving too long and prompts you to stop for a break. It all accounts for a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating and an 89% score in the testing program's child occupant category. These days though you'd expect all this sort of thing to be further embellished with uh, active camera driven safety tech and that's something Citroen claims to have provided with the safety pack which it's developed as part of the change to Space Tourer branding. Uh, unfortunately close inspection of the small print reveals that this pack is standard only with top spec flare trim. It's only optional on this mid-range field model and it can't be had at all on a base touch edition version. Uh, the pack's main inclusion is autonomous braking. The brand calls its system active safety brake with forward collision warning. And as is usual with these kinds of setups, uh, this one scans the road in front of you as you drive looking for potential accidents. If such a hazard is detected, then you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, the safety pack also includes speed limit recognition. Now that will picture road signs as you pass them and then display them for you on the dash. And also driver attention alert, which will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and then warn you if it detects your lethargy. If you want to go further and you have a Grand C4 Space Tourer with either feel or flare trim, then you'll be offered the optional Safety Pack Plus, which adds to these Safety Pack features with three other camera-driven safety elements. Uh, there are intelligent beam headlights, which automatically dip themselves at night in the face of oncoming traffic, uh, an active blind spot monitoring system, which warns you if you're just about to pull out in front of another vehicle, and also an active lane departure warning system setup that works on the highway to warn you if you've drifted out of your lane. Both of those last two systems also apply light steering lock to ease the vehicle back to where it should be. By the way, if you happen to be specifying automatic transmission with this car, another alternative way that you could get your Grand C4 Space Tourer fitted with the safety pack and the dipping headlights, uh, the lane departure warning system and the blind spot monitoring setup uh, would be to specify the driver assistance pack that we've been trying here. Now that probably is worth thinking about because uh, this more complete pack additionally includes the useful active radar guided cruise control with a stop function. Uh, which will be really helpful for longer journeying folk. The system will automatically keep you a safe distance behind the vehicle in front at highway speeds and it will seamlessly slow the car down and start it off again if you come across the tailback. Having tried most of this stuff, I uh, will tell you that the radar guided active cruise control works well, but it's fiddly to activate. Uh, setup requires the use of the steering wheel buttons, manipulation of the infotainment touchscreen, and attention to the top digital display. The active lane departure warning system, meanwhile, uses a vibrating mechanism that buzzes a seatbelt against you when your wheels stray over the lane separating lines without you indicating. It is rather irritating, actually, but uh, well, maybe that's the point. 
Let's switch now into considering the various more general options that Citroen offers with this car. Uh, most of these are grouped into packs, which tend to be specific to specific trim levels. And with base touch edition trim, adding in the available style pack will give you larger 17 inch wheels and the panoramic glass roof. For the inside of this entry level point in the range, you can upgrade the cabin decor at extra cost with Citroen's wild blue or dark grey ambiance packages and they lift the look of the interior quite a lot. On such a touch edition C4 Space Tourer variant though, um, we'd probably be more likely to save our money for the convenience pack. Now that gives you the uh, child observation mirror and also the rear side window blinds that we mentioned earlier, as well as a reversing camera, keyless entry and Citroen's Connect navigation system. If you're buying this Citroen, it's more likely though that you'll have gone with our recommendation and you'll have saved up the extra for a mid-range field trim model like this one with all the extra practicality features that we think you'll want. Now if that is the case, then you'll probably want to know that a convenience pack is offered at this level in the range too. And we'd certainly recommend that you tick the box for that because it includes quite a lot of what you'd ideally want. Um, it also gives you keyless entry. It gives you the child observation mirror and the rear side window blinds, but it additionally throws in more. A powered tailgate, an electrochrome rear view mirror, a two-tone horn, and the park assist system for steering you into spaces. As well as all this, the field convenience pack further gives you quite a lot of that camera-driven safety stuff that we were talking about earlier on. The active lane departure warning system, the active blind spot monitoring system, uh, the speed limit recognition system, and the driver attention alert system, also the intelligent beam headlights. If on a mid-range field spec Grand C4 Space Tour like this one, you want to give the car the smarter look that's provided by the priciest top flare spec variant, then your dealer will point you towards one of the style packs which are available for mid-level buyers. The field style pack gives you that huge panoramic glass roof, dark tinted rear privacy glass and LED illumination for the rear lights and the front indicators. The Field Style Pack Plus gives you all that along with larger 18 inch Python alloy wheels. Uh, you can also bring extra luxury to the inside of a Field Spec model by paying extra for the flagship variant's hype grey ambiance trimmed cabin with its part leather upholstery and its gloss finished grey dashboard. Finally, if you have stretched all the way up to a flare spec Grand C4 Space Tourer, you might very possibly be thinking about adding the extra Safety Plus Pack camera-driven features that we covered earlier. Now, to remind you, uh, these were the auto-dipping headlights, the active blind spot monitoring, and the active lane departure warning setup. Now, if so, uh, then another alternative way would be to pay extra for the Flare Convenience Pack. Now, that packages up those three elements with a three. 360 degree camera system and xenon headlights. On a flare spec model you can also pay extra for full Nappa leather upholstery and that comes as part of what Citroen calls its dune grey ambiance cabin trimming pack. Now as part of this pack uh, you also get what is probably our favourite optional feature in this car that's the brilliant relaxed front passenger seat and that gives you an electric footrest, a massage function and a beautifully soft enveloping headrest. Now, now we have passengered in a Grand C4 Space Tourer, fitted up with the relaxed package, and it's like traveling first class in a 747. What else? Uh, well, you're probably going to need to pay your Citroen dealer more for your chosen paint color because solid onyx black is the only shade that comes as standard. A polar white solid finish is your first extra cost option, or you could pay for one of the brand's various metallic shades. We have soft sand here. Um, a detachable tow bar is also offered across the range. As we touched on earlier, on the limit handling won't be a priority for MPV buyers, but three other issues most certainly are practicality, safety and cost of ownership. The first two areas are well covered by this car, but does it stack up on the balance sheet? 
well when the second generation Grand C4 Picasso model, this Grand C4 Space Tourer is based on, was first launched back in 2014, Citroen went back to basics to try to ensure that it did, improving the aerodynamics, adding in stop and start engine technology, and most significantly, using a more modern EMP2 chassis, which saved 140 kilos of weight. Having done all of that, it was rather a pity that from launch, this car was saddled with a rather old tech range of engines, but Citroen has since addressed that issue with the result that this Grand C4 Space Tourer can offer some of the most efficient power plants available in its class, complying of course with the latest Euro uh, 6.2 emissions directive. Even if you go for the petrol option, a 130 horsepower 1.2 litre three cylinder pure tech unit, you can expect 54.3 mpg on the combined side and 118 grams per kilometer of CO2. Those are readings that will hardly be affected at all if you go for this green pump engine with a new EAT8 automatic transmission. That automatic box is supposed to be 7% more efficient than the previous E86 unit. And whatever your choice of gearbox, this means that your Grand C4 Space Tourer will qualify for Road Tax Band C, which costs £30 a year. And you're looking at a benefit in kind taxation rating of Group 24. To give you some class perspective on those readings, uh, directly comparable Ford Grand C-Max and Renault Grand Scenic petrol models go five fewer miles on every gallon and they chug out around 10 grams per kilometer more CO2. If you prefer the other volume power plant, the 1.5 litre Blue HDI 130 diesel, you're looking at 68.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. Those are figures that will improve to 70.6 mpg and 105 grams per kilometre if you choose automatic transmission. Now that would be enough to keep your Grand C4 Space Tourer exempt from road tax entirely. And you're looking at a benefit in kind taxation rating of Group 26. Now a rival Renault Grand Scenic Diesel does fractionally better in terms of fuel and CO2, but it gives you significantly less performance. Uh, for a directly equivalent for Grand C-Max, uh, the 1.5 TDCI 120 PS model, the comparable returns are 57.6 mpg and 131 grams per kilometer so quite a difference. For completion let's give you the figures of the top engine you can have in the uh, Grand C4 Space Tourer that's the 2 litre Blue HDI 160 diesel we're trying today and that comes only with the E88 automatic gearbox. Here the figures are 60.1 mpg and 123 grams per kilometre for a field model with 17 inch wheels uh, that's the variant that we're driving here obviously you'll do fractionally worse with top spec flare trim and those larger 18 inch wheels. Uh, the benefit in kind taxation rating that you're looking at for the 2 litre diesel is either group 29 or 30. Stick with the two volume power plants and the figures that we've just been referencing are certainly a long way from the kind of returns that you used to get from the old VTI petrol and EHDI diesel engines used by this design back in 2014. So how have Citroen engineers achieved such a significant efficiency improvement? Well, with the PureTech petrol models, the answer lies in lighter weight and a 30% reduction in mechanical losses due to friction. Uh, as for the PSA Group's Blue HDI diesel, technology well the concept here is based around a clever three-step after treatment system which is designed to better eliminate the four nasty pollutants that diesel units usually put out namely unburnt hydrocarbons uh, carbon monoxide nitrogen oxides and particulates now the first stage sees those uh, unwanted hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide elements converted into harmless water and carbon dioxide in the second stage, that nasty nitrogen oxide also gets converted into water via a selective catalytic reduction process using a urea and water mixture called AdBlue, and that's something that you'll have to get topped up every 12,500 miles. And finally, in the third step, a particulate emissions filter eliminates virtually all particulates at a stroke. The result of all this is industry-leading diesel technology that many manufacturers are just struggling to copy. 
what else? Oh, well, earlier we mentioned the emphasis on weight saving, which has gone into the creation of this design, and it's made quite a difference. Uh, a Grand C4 Space Tourer is around 150 kilos lighter than a rival Ford Grand C-Max and a Renault Grand Scenic model. Uh, that in turn reduces wear on consumables like tires and brake pads, all of which adds to the other measures that Citroen has put into place to try to cut this model's maintenance costs. Now they reckon that this Space Tourer's clever suspension design increases tire life by 20% and that the design of its brakes will preserve the brake pads for 40% longer than a rival model might manage. Another thing that could help you keep garage costs in check is the affordable three-year servicing plan, which is available at point of purchase. Uh, servicing intervals are every year or 16,000 miles for the PureTech 130 petrol model or the Blue HDI 130 diesel, or every year and 20,000 miles for this Blue HDI 160 diesel. On to residual values. Now, independent experts reckon that you'll get around 41% of your original purchase price back after three years. Now, to give you some perspective there, that's close to the kind of return that you get from a comparable Volkswagen Turan model. Uh, so let's finish by briefing you on insurance. Uh, the PureTech 130 model is rated at group 22E or 23E if you get it with top spec flare trim. The Blue HDI 130 diesel is rated at group 21E or 22e if you get it with a flare trim this two liter blue hdi 160 variant is rated at group 27e with field trim or group 29a with top flare spec and finally there's the usual citroen three-year 60,000 mile warranty So, how to summarize when it comes to Citroen's conquest of space? Well, this contender won't suit buyers prioritizing sharp driving dynamics, but these people are in an extreme minority in this segment. Most in search of a modern people carrier prioritize practicality, running costs, and clever design. If it's here, they can have all that. With class-leading style and technology thrown in, then so much the better. The second generation Grand C4 Picasso MPV developed this proposition and this Grand C4 Space Tour model has further sharpened it with the well-judged package of improvements we've been reviewing here. In its earliest form, this design's futuristic looks always seemed a bit out of kilter with the old tech petrol engines and there are the basic levels of media connectivity provided. With all this now sorted, this MPV offers perfect proof that a people carrier can do more than just provide comfortable, efficient transport. It can be, well, what Citroens once were. Clever, futuristic, expressively designed. Cars that you'd be genuinely proud to own. We think you'd feel like that if you needed a model of this kind and this were on your driveway. True, it is a pity that you have to stretch to an up spec trim level for all the features that show this car at its best. But if you can do that and you tick all the right boxes, you'll get a people carrier that really seems to have been created with a bit of love, with an appealing mix of French flair and German solidity. From the panoramic windscreen to the lounge style massaging passenger seat, from the widescreen HD instrument display to the fact that you can sit and Facebook your friends on the touchscreen. It's a car that's a joy to operate. And for us, it's a joy to look at, as different and refreshing in design as it will be to own. In short, the Citroen we used to know is back. The manufacturer that took risks, created magic, and brought us cars that sat apart from the ordinary norm. Now, if that sounds appealing, and you're in the market for a model like this one, then we think you'll find a lot here that you'll like. <laughs>